Hi there, it's Robert, the Red Tie Guy, and for today's Terms, Tech, and Tips Tuesday, I am going over earnest money. So, what is earnest money and why is it needed? What is a good amount of earnest money to offer? Can more earnest money make for a better offer? And if a seller can take the earnest money because of a buyer's breach of contract, should they? So, before we begin, I just want to say earnest money does relate to a lot of other parts of the contract. And as a disclaimer, this is general real estate advice to get you comfortable with making an offer or to get you comfortable with receiving an offer in some of the terms that might be involved. However, the specifics such as mediation, what constitutes a breach of contract, ways that a buyer could cancel without a breach of contract, etc. There's a lot of moving parts, and if you are watching this video for advice on a specific transaction, then you should consult your real estate professional instead, or a lawyer. This is just general advice to get you common, get you familiar with the common terms. So, with that said, what is the earnest money? Earnest money, or good faith money, is money put up by the buyer, held by escrow that goes towards a down payment or closing cost, but can be taken by the sellers if the buyer cancels while breaching the contract. Now, the specifics of what constitutes a breach that the seller could take the money, that's gonna differ and that gets into a very specific case-by-case -case basis. But the bottom line is, this is the money that the buyer puts up that says, I am going to fulfill my obligations. I am not going, if I'm going to cancel, I will do so when and where the contract allows me to do so. And the reason why this is needed is that when an offer is made and the seller agrees to it, in the typical deal, the buyer has a lot of room to cancel, but the seller does not. The buyer could cancel during the inspection period. The buyer could cancel if the seller is not willing to do enough of the requested repairs. The buyer could cancel if it appraises low. And then there's other contingencies that might be added or might be tied in with the loan that the buyer has to, for the purchase. That being said, the seller could easily be off the market for an extended length of time if for no other reason than the buyer went silent. This is money to assure the sellers that taking the home off the market and having this time while the buyer is doing the inspections and doing the appraisal is being taken seriously and that if the buyer cancels without reason without a clause or contingency within the contract there's money at stake that the seller could potentially get so what is a good amount of the earnest money now, keep in mind if the buyer cancels uh, with good reason that's allowed in the contract, such as during the inspection period or cancels because it appraised low, the buyer does get the money back. My rule of thumb has been the minimum needed for earnest money would be 1% of the purchase price rounded up to the nearest thousand. That's specifically rounded up, not rounded down. So a home for, say, 150000 or 125000 I would recommend a minimum of $2,000 in earnest money. This shows that there's enough money put in stake that the buyer is taking it seriously. It wasn't just a offer thrown out there with $25, $50 put up, but actual money. Is more money better? Could, a, you, could more earnest money make for a better offer? Uh, that depends. Mostly, earnest money is used to convince or assure a seller that the buyer isn't going to back out easily, that they've given this some thought and they're going to continue through with this. If you're, in, if you're competing with other buyers, more earnest money might say that you're more serious or assure them that you do actually have the funds for the down payment by offering to let the seller escrow company hold on to a larger amount for example i once had a buyer who wanted to purchase a home 
using the proceeds of a sale from a home in another state. Now, this was not a contingency where he said, oh, hey, I'm only buying it if this sells. It was just easier to say, I'm using these proceeds, but I can still buy this cash with other funds, even if it doesn't close. So he didn't need a contingency saying that it needs to close or that he backs out if that home doesn't close. He was just saying, I want to use those proceeds. Now, it might be a little hard to read through a purchase contract for another home. It might be a little difficult to say, well, how much of the proceeds is he getting? How much is paying off elsewhere? What he did, though, was offer a very sizable five-figure earnest money amount when he offered the home. And when you are holding on to tens of thousands of dollars, that's pretty convincing that, yes, he has the money elsewhere, and he's willing to put up a rather large amount of money because he's sure that he can pull out the money elsewhere and that he has the rest for the purchase. And that's one way that using a very large earnest money deposit can make a better offer. It can simplify the conversation by saying, well, look, I can put more at stake to assure you that you don't need to spend time asking me about where the rest of the funds are. Here's a large amount to hold on to. Now, finally though, if the buyer does breach the contract, should the seller take the earnest money? And let's just be honest here completely, yes. It's in the seller's prerogative to say whether they should or shouldn't take the money and to what extent they can or possibly contest this. There's a lot of specifics in the contract, so definitely read over that before you are thinking that you will be taking the money. But with that being said, buyers could potentially cancel for a variety of reasons. Think of reasons that you are moving. They may have the same reasons to not purchase because those reasons popped up in the middle of the closing period. For example, uh, they may find out that they are taking on additional members of the family. They may need to leave for an extended period of time to take care of a sick family member. Or perhaps there's other reasons that happened that they could not control for, could not predict for, and for as large as the purchase and the earnest money is, they have to walk away. Life does happen. That's definitely something where you need to consider whether or not you want to be associated with canceling for those reasons. Um, but at the same time, your home was off the market. It's hard to gauge what that time off the market did for your home. So weigh that, but mostly consider the conversation up into this point. Has the buyer been responsive that you would believe them if something happened and they said they could no longer fulfill the deal? And they ask out of the kindness of your heart to return the earnest money. Um, other things is if they've been faithfully executing inspections, appraisal, and have been keeping you up to date with the loan, it seems as though they're putting forth a good effort, and yes, life happened. Perhaps you should believe them and look into your heart for getting the money's money back. But ultimately, yes, it would be in the bot. It would be in the seller's call, in that hypothetical instance. On the other hand, if this hasn't been very responsive, uh, perhaps the buyer has not made much effort to inspect the home has not been very communicative about their loan qualifications and they haven't been discussed it hasn't been responsive with the listing agent then there's a chance that you might legitimately feel as though your time on the market was wasted by this buyer who did not have the sincerity to fulfill the offer perhaps there was something suspicious uh, that uh, that you uh, feel misled you. Well, the earnest money was there to convince you that you're not being misled and you're within your rights to consider taking it. Just consult the contract thoroughly.
consult with your agent and see how feasible it would be in the specifics of your circumstances to possibly take the earnest money from the buyer. I won't say that it's guaranteed, but it is something to consider, uh, especially when you are looking at the offer and thinking to yourself, well, if I am being misled or he stops talking to me and my home has been off the market for an extended length of time, is this amount of money enough to comfort me as I put it back on the market? Or in the other circumstances, if you're the buyer, gauge, gauge how much you want to offer in the earnest money to convince the seller that you are committed to this home. And yeah, keep that in mind. And ultimately remember, deadlines are important. Your earnest money is a commitment to the deadlines in the contract. So also keep that in mind and take a second look at the clauses that discuss mediation and such in the event that there is a conflict or a breach or dispute in the contract. That being said, final disclaimer, this is general real estate advice to get you familiar with the terms. This is not legal advice for any specific contract. And if you're looking at this video for advice on a specific contract such as yours or one that you are considering making, then I fully advise you to consult with your real estate professional who is helping you draft that contract. So that being said, I'm Robert Neely, the Red Tie Guy. Feel free to click, uh, like, comment, and subscribe below. And I look forward to hearing from you all. Check in next week for the Terms, Tech, and Tips Tuesday. And you all have a good one. Thank you.